Okay, let's continue. And uh, we just uh, uh, gave the descriptions of different uh, foreign investments and then turn to the deaths and then the deaths turn to the deficits and reduce the investments into the urban industries and then to make a large number of unemployment. And uh, that is uh, the crisis. And then the crisis by sent out this uh, unemployment labor to the countryside and then to make the urban industries have a soft landing. So the crisis is ending mainly by the rural, and the rural mainly by the people's coming, by the collective system. So that is a, and a, why this, uh, this uh, uh, crisis always can be recovered when there is no capital investments, but they still can, can keep continue, keep the industries continue. So but that is the so-called Mao time. And then Deng, Deng's time, that is a, when there's a Mao's time, we can see that and uh, the first time the Soviet Union uh, uh, invested in China caused by the Korean War. And then there's a, there's a, a crisis happened in the 1960s, down to the minus. And then the, the large number of the uh, CTUs sent to the countryside. And then caused by the, 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 the second, when they recovered, and then the 1967-68, there is a, the, the second crisis happened, and then the second sent the unemployed employee use to the countryside. And uh, the, the third time is when they have a Western facilities flow into China. They also have a big death, and then they make the, the third time's unemployment city use going to countryside. So every time is a crisis, uh, soft landing, by the rural contains this unemployment city use. And then until the 1980s, and, and 1980s is also caused by the second times take the foreign facilities and the foreign machines from Western countries. It also, this time it's a 4.2 billion, this time it's a 8.2 billion. So put them together, it's a two and a half times than the first uh, foreign uh, capital flow in China. So, and then to make the crisis more, more severe than before. And then in 1980s, when the economic downgrade and the large number of unemployment use could hardly send to the countryside again because people's coming dismissed. And also Mao deaths. So Mao can mobilize the, uh, the city use going to countryside. But then at that time, these uh, millions of city use come back to the city. So that means worse the unemployment problem. So uh, originally one crisis can make 10 million to 20 million unemployment use. But this time, yeah, they have a new added 10 to 20 million unemployment use. But also, this uh, unemployment use come back from the countryside back to the city. They are already sent to the countryside. Now they become older, they all want to come back. So that means the city unemployment situation became worse than 1970s and 1960s. So that it is a big, heavy, big, there's a heavy pressure of unemployment issues. And the governments need to solve the problem. So this time, caused by large number of unemployment, total amount is a 40 million. I mean, originally one, one crisis can make less than 20 million. But this time, in 1980s, the beginning of 1980s, China have more than 40 million unemployment use in cities. At that time, they not calculated into the uh, unemployment workers because the government said, you haven't got the job in the factory, so you are not unemployment. You are waiting job use. So at that time, we have a very strange, strange title. Most of these, uh, these uh, uh, 
people come back to the cities with no job in name of wait uh Dai Ye Qingyan means a waiting job use. And uh, so caused by such kind of heavy pressure, the governments adopt kind of very urgent rescue policy to ask all the factory absorb this uh, surplus labor from the society. Originally you need five workers, now they enlarge to ten. So means that you share half of the work and also half of the salary to another young people to make them in. So and then certainly the efficiency of the factory decreased. Mm -hmm. Understand that you make five workers work, share with other, another five, means that ten people work for five, five workers work, means that the efficiency decreased at least half. But and anyway, you, you, you try your best to solve this uh, problem, to avoid this uh, uh, educated use, this waiting job use, wandering in the street, and then to make a lot of problems. And yet even that, yeah, before that, before they absorb this uh, unemployment use, they have made a lot of conflicts. And then at that time, the, the, the governments adopt uh, 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 the price uh, policy to take a lot of use into the jail. So maybe that's, it's a millions, maybe. Anyway, it's a large number of these uh, unemployment they are wandering in the street, they make a lot of bad things and then arrest them and put them in jail. That is uh, not only in jail but also so called labor education, Lao Dong Jiao Yang, means uh, they got to work in some farm or some construction field but not pay because they do a lot of bad things. So take them to the construction field. So, so many bad things happened in the beginning of the 1980s caused by the highway pressure of the unemployment. And also, that's, uh, another thing is a, is a very negative influence. That is, uh, the governments also want the governments departments open the gate. The governments departments set up the companies, absorb this uh, governments officials case they are young generation of government cadres. They also have no job. And then they come back to cities. So give them the opportunity to join the company. But the company is a firm run by their old generation's government department. That is uh, that time in name of Guan Dao, means a bureaucrat uh, Dao, how to say that? Bureaucrat business? Something like that. But business is not good. It's not good because they take too much uh, low price materials and then sell in high price. Means that they take the, the big revenue not because of they work very hard. It's because of some, some bureaucrats give them special priority to take low price materials sell in the society, in the markets. But that is a beginning. And then later, they don't sell. They just sell the, the quota. They sell the documents, sell the quota, and how much raw materials they have nominally. They even don't pay to the, this, uh, this uh, factory. If this factory produces glass or some or, uh, or, uh, cemento, and uh, these, uh, these uh, products still be in the store of the factory, but they have the documents to say that these things, low price, and then they sell the documents, and the other one can sell again. So one document, one quota can sell 10 times. And then there's a large profit taken by this uh, so-called bureaucrat business. So this uh, stirred up a lot of trouble and then the make also make very serious corruption. So the corruptions exactly caused by such kind of policies. So I don't want to criticize, but 
the governments made the policy to benefit the governments itself and the benefits the young generation of the governments. So I said the governments as, as, at the, the first page, the second page, I gave you the news concept. It's not, not come from my thought, it's come from the practice. What is government? When the government's facing the challenge of the crisis, what they should do? So that is uh, the government's behavior. And then these are bad things. You mean sell the documents, sell the quotas, many times, certainly make high inflation. So that means that they, they want us, their parents, give them more. And then the, the, the market price will be less. I mean, selling the materials by market price will be less, and the market price will be high. So the less, the high. And then large number of the raw materials, steel and, and, and the glass and the cementos, even the TV, color TV and the reef regulators, all of these things at that time not easy to buy because it's a very short supply. And just by some factory they can, they can, they can produce. So this uh, a short supply and then the price must be high. And then by this uh, so-called bureaucratic business, sell several times, the market price is much, much high. And then the inflation also made the bank became corruption because the inflation high, bank rate is low. Means that if you take a, a loan from the bank, immediately you take this, uh, this, this uh, revenue. Means that inflation and the bank rate, if, if the 10 percent, means they will take 10 percent revenue. Understand me? That is uh, not by your pay labor, not by the hard work, it's just by you take this uh, loan. And then you can transfer your loan to others and then take the benefits from others. So this uh, this uh, dao means that the how to say the the, the 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 business by transfer the business by transfer not only transfer the materials the products but also by transfer the money and then to make the the, the bank system have a uh, many people corruption and the governments have uh, many people corruption so the corruption series happened in the mid 1980s caused by such kind of policy. Until 1990s, the corruption became a spread. At that time, few people can, can maintain that I'm not corruption. Not easy. Mm -hmm. So that is government's corruption from such kind of reform policy. Mm, so by, by these things, we can see that, and uh, also caused by the crisis, there is uh, something happened in the political regime. Nowadays, still be very, very uh, impact because of the, the 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 central government's budget. Very, uh, the percentage of central budget is very low, so the local have uh, the local so-called zhuquan uh, means that local can do, make decision by themselves, and then the local governments do a lot of policy as a pro-capital because they are short of the capital they want to develop their industries, local industries and then benefits by the local industries they can have a fiscal income so the local governments set up a lot of pro-capital policy until 1994 when the central make the new policy to make the balance local half, central half and then when local lost half and the original local is here as a theme as a 70, 70 something, 70 percent, but down to 50 percent, or even less than 50 percent. And then local governments cannot stand such kind of loss. So local governments take more uh, uh, payments, more not taxation, that is a fees. So they do the collect fees from the peasants, from the rural society. And then to make farmers burden goes high. That is a new phenomenon in from the mid of 1990s and then to have a lot of social conflicts. So at that time the peasants all understand the government's tax is very low. 
But second tax is not tax. Second tax is fees collection by the local. So local fees tax is three times than the total amount of the agricultural tax. This phenomenon happened in the old governments, also in later Qing Dynasty. If you allow local have a, a their ability to have a fees collection, that must be very bad to the grassroots, to the marginalized population. So that is why from the 1980s, there is a serious corruption spread. In the 1990s, there is an annually increased very uh, uh, big uh, uh, social conflicts. That is a, in name of means a mass instability case. Anyway, so these uh, things happened in, in China to make the central at that time lost the power, lost the control. And then local have done a lot of things not positive until now. So we can see that this is uh, very important to, to know. And then also from the 1990s, when China trying to accelerate, to, to merge into the globalization, there is a double supply from China, that is a developing country, to the capitalist country. First is that China export a lot manufacturing goods and the raw materials. You know, from 1970s, when Western countries transfer out their industries, especially lead industry and the labor intensive industries, they are short of the supply, especially the United States. So, and they have a big financial capital, means they have a financial capital surplus, and, but they have a shortage of the commercial goods, the industrial products. So they need to import. And so the more they import, have a, the more so-called the current account deficit. But they got somehow this uh, financial service. And then to do the transitions, to make this uh, like China and other developing countries, to give their surplus to the capital account. And then to make the more current account deficit, the more capital account surplus. That is, uh, they take two times benefits. First times benefits means that they have a large amount of the commercial goods. And then low price means that they don't have inflation. And then they can issue a lot of currency. Currency big, but no inflation because the commercial goods low price. And then they ask them, they ask China to reinvest into the American bond markets, get very low return. But American can sell the bonds to developing countries and then to use money to strengthen their military power, to strengthen their political power, and then to control the world. So means that when you join this globalization, you lose two sides. One side is a physical production, another side is a financial production. So these are so-called global regulation or, or global order, a global uh, 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 um, order, or, yes? So, well, if developing country want to change, that would be threat. So the Western countries unified together, they said, okay, the global un uh, uh, universal applied regulation cannot be changed by any developing country. That is so-called, they have a discord, institutional discord, and then institutional uh, uh, power to control the institutions. So by such kind of regulation, certainly these uh, developing countries will have a low income labor. They cannot increase labor income. And then unemployment also very serious. Turn to the social conflicts. And another side, they need to take too much from the natural resources. And then the environment deficits also very serious. So both natural resources problem and the social problems all created not by themselves, but always be criticized by Western countries is because of you are short of the human rights. You are not good at democracy. You are not good at least uh, social management, whatever. So, but if you exactly learn to Western country system, immediately 
fall to the trap. That is a so-called is a, a paradox of developing country. So when developing country accelerates the more to the globalization, like China, it's uh, not very clear to have such kind of picture. Even nowadays, the mainstream uh, 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 still believe that China benefits from the globalization. But indeed, they double supply. And then to have uh, two kinds of the problems, natural and the social. Here, when Western countries upgrade their economy structure from the physical industrial production into the financial capital production, they control this uh, high levels position by QE or by QE make the inflation to the raw materials markets. And then raw material markets, most of these uh, country occupy the raw materials markets occupy the transnational company, also by Western countries. So they can have a large return and then to make their stock markets, the index of stock markets goes high. And then just a several country control their sovereignty of the raw materials, can benefit, can have a free riding. That is Russia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and uh, Libya, and very few country. Most of others, or also including of the, the, the uh, Venezuela. These countries have a somehow revolution. Take back their sovereignty of the natural resources, especially the oil. So when QE policy to skill these American big investors, then big investors invest into the future markets, then to make oil price in increased, and then these uh, 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 independent sovereignty country control their natural resources, they have a large returns by the high inflation. But all of these cost, both of these two sides cost down to the physical production country like China. And then to make China downgrade. So that is a, the, 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 the new phenomena since the 2008 Wall Street financial turmoil take place. But very, sh very soon, just uh, 2008 to 2012, just uh, four years, and then the raw materials price decreased because global crisis, global crisis is taking place. Such kind of things destroyed a lot of countries. And then the demand, all of these countries' demand decreased. And when there's no demand, the raw materials price also decreased. So it means that these uh, big in institutional investors use the big stone, click them themselves, finally. But also in worth of these uh, so-called uh, uh, independent sovereignty countries. So Venezuela, Russia, and, uh, and, and so and so, all have a big trouble because Originally, they can have a free riding, they have a big return, but nowadays, not return, became a deficit. So, doesn't mean these countries has, themselves have some change. No, it's because of a global situation changed. So, we must understand that it's a very important key point to understand, to, to do the analysis of these, uh, these countries, not the president bad, not the government's bad. A lot of people try to find this uh, is uh, maybe caused by some politician. No, it's caused by the global market. So when we know that we can see that China now became the biggest industrial country, and but the position in the world competition still be very low. So China is not the stronger industrial country, it's so weak industry country. Also China can each you a lot of paper money to be the big financial amount, but also not strong country. It's a weak because no competitive. So when we talk about this one, we see that 
The only one is a do something inside. It's a social innovation. Try to have the natural resources revenue and labor resources revenue, and also maintain the authority for currency, and then you can have a currency revenue. By these revenues, you can upgrade your position a little bit. Avoid the caps. So, since 1990s, the beginning of the 1990s, Western countries talk about China collapse many years. Every time there is a crisis, they will talk about China collapse. Soon, you will be collapsed. But up to now, not China not collapse because of they have done a lot of efforts in this revenues development, and then to have a little bit upgrade their position, and then they I mean China hasn't been collapsed. So we need to keep social innovation. We need to have a more readjustment for the national strategy. Here, these uh, these curves shows the textiles, plastics, and the electric, whatever, all have so-called smiling curve, like just. The upper one shows the whole country. That is a, com, the 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 smiling curve, of the, of the state computation, and the later one. Is that the different factory, different industries, all have such kind of smiling curve? So if you see that China in these industries all are in the low level, so it means that China not strong industry country, but weak industry country. Even they have a big number of industrial capacity. Here shows that why uh, here shows that the American uh, 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 so-called economic structure. Here, the enterprises is a physical production because the physical production transfer to overseas, and then the overseas profit directly come back to the capital markets. So these uh, institutional investments have such kind of circle, and then government QE. Subsidize these institutional investments, so they have this circle. But enterprises, when they transfer out, they will have a no employment, reduce their employment, so the labor social security also reduced, cannot contribute to the government's redistribution system, and then to make government's fiscal have a deficit and debt, and then the more deficit, the more debt they want, the more government bonds. <laughs> the more government bonds, they want more paper currency to buy the government bonds. So that means this, the capital, financial capitalization, became larger and larger. Uh -huh. So that is a venture board, became larger and larger. So that is financial capital became bubbleized, and the bubble break will be tomorrow, will be next month, will be next year. Anyway, should be, must be break, a uh, broken. And then, because the government cannot do the redistribution, so large number of unemployment go into the street. There is a lot of street violence, and also caused by the benefits only share inside of this capital group. So they have such kind of American policy, do the money strategy. The money strategy mainly rely on the energy and the green. So the future markets of energy and the green controlled by. Institutional investors, investments. So the capital game play another two game: energy and the green. Negative impact to developing countries. So here it shows the American QE one, QE two, QE three, and then this money flow into the institutional investments, and then to use the money strategy to negative impact the developing countries. So we know the so-called the global, the international regulation, the world order. What is that? Is exploitation by financial capital group in small uh, uh, population. The the large number of these uh, 
grassroots, this uh, marginalized population, just uh, take the cost. So we have to make every people understand such kind of unfair, the unfairness, the unfair regulations must be broken, must be turned on, and then we need a new world. So another word is possible, it's come from such kind of bad situation. So we believe the alternative, we believe another word must be possible, but must be implemented. And also caused by the, the move out their physical production. So from 1980s, that is a new liberalism. The new liberalism combining, new liberalism is a kind of soft power. It's a kind of ideology combining the financial capital grow up. So here shows that the double, the financial capital since 1980s to the crisis happened year 2008. It's an increase many times. That is the world. Here is also to give your, your picture to show the, the bars to show that the global in, uh, inflation mainly caused by energy and the food. Just now I mentioned energy and the food future market price increased mainly by transnational company invest into these uh, future markets as a speculation. So they turn a lot of uh, uh, returns. They, come, they, they take the returns, but the developing country and the poor countries take the cost. Now let's talk about the, 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 the part four, uh, China facing the new challenge and uh, uh, led by the global mainstream. And, but inside of China, they do some, they did have the truth. Uh, they did have the policies for uh, carry out the rebalance. Originally by 1980s, 1990s, by the uh, marketization and globalization, China enlarged the three gap. The three gap is a regional gap, coastal China, inland China, income gap enlarged. Second gap is a rural and urban gap, rural people low income, urban people high income. And then the third one is a poor and the rich. So the three gap, and the caused by the global crisis, especially caused by the 1998 East Asia financial turmoil. China facing the challenge of overseas demand decreased and then turned to the overproduction. That is the first overproduction. It happened in China. And then China started to have a regional gap rebalance policy. That is a national strategy. And uh, Chinese invested into the different region, especially the Western China, made China and Northeast. And for more than eight trillion, it's almost one and uh, 1.1, 1.2 trillion dollars for the regional gap rebalance. And then from 2003, when China changed their policy to focus on the rural regeneration, they invest into rural also 1.1 or 1.2 trillion dollars. So the regional gap and the, and the rural urban gap uh, just uh, by 10 years or 12 years to realize the rebalance. They carry out such kind of big investments and then to make rebalance. But nowadays, since 2015, China started to do the third one. I mean, rich and poor rebalance. I got to say that the rich poor rebalance cannot be uh, carried out because rich is in financial capital euro rich means that they can take the benefits from the financial market. Few people can do the business in financial market. Large number of the people still be in the physical productions. So means that the gap, rich became more rich. That will be a long-term trend. And, but you can do something to improve the situation of the mass, 
of the large large population means a low class. So try to do something in low class. It's better than you announce you can make this a high class downgrade. Let them still be in the financial markets to take these uh, intangible returns. But it's uh, just number. It's almost nothing. And then you strengthen the physical production to make it to be the inclusive and ecological, that is a uh, sustainability. So that is uh, nowadays the Chinese take as a kind of domestic uh, uh, strategy. So we can see that, and uh, originally, <coughs> they, they have then two rebalance, but here, many trillions will be invested for poverty reduction. That will be the right choice, right choice. Here, the precondition, when they talk about the national strategy, when they talk about the Chinese readjustment in the new century. We said, okay, because of there, are, there is a kind of uh, uh, tw uh, twin Egyptian pyramid, means that China economically and socially still be stabilized. Economically means that these years, caused by the physical construction and the infrastructure construction, China has had, uh, had have uh, uh, five, trading uh, 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 physical assets. And then based on that, they have 180 trading financial capital. And then above, there is a 60 trading uh, government stats. And these uh, these uh, uh, structures to be stable because they keep invest into the infrastructure construction, you can enlarge your physical prop properties. <coughs> and then you can have a more financial properties. So the physical property and the financial properties enlarged means that death can be reduced as a percentage. Here, cost by the land reform and then the low class all have the little properties. So the low class still be stable. And then above there is a new emerged merging and middle class and the middle class now became the main force to do the consumption to enlarge the consumption of domestic so domestic needs domestic demand can be enlarged by rising the 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 uh, middle class but middle class have a very uh, confused ideology so that is the trouble but middle class in the world somehow is a main force to absorb these uh, commercial goods. And also middle class want to have a green development. They believe that they, this uh, kind of food safety and uh, drawing to anti-pollution and uh, social movements and so on and so. So middle class also can be a positive uh, uh, force, positive group to maintain the stability. So, but. There, here is a very interesting. China, politically speaking or social speaking, <coughs> is exactly controlled by the politicized high class. <coughs> they control large number of the uh, of the assets, both financial assets and the physical assets, mainly by state-owned enterprises. So, that's one. Uh, uh, the the large number of the prop properties in name of the SOE, but indeed controlled by ruling party. So this one politicized, then more politicized. Doesn't mean other countries high class not politicized, they all politicized. But Chinese high class is uh, strict, strictly controlled by the politi political system. So that is a uh, fully politicized, almost every big form in name of SOE, state-owned enterprise, must be appointed by the Central Party C Committee, uh, by the Zhu Zhibu. And if you are in the province, 
as a big forum in name of SOE that the, the leader, the president of, and the CEO must be appointed by provincial Zuzhibu, means uh, organizational department of the party. So that is a so-called so fully politicized. Give you an example. And uh, because of anti-corruption, and uh, this uh, uh, bank, uh, I mean, we have a big, big bank, four big banks, all are top five. Uh, this bank uh, president and uh, CEO, they have an uh, annual income two million. And the two million is uh, not so big. And if you compare with this international bank, this a foreign bank, it's just maybe 10% of this, uh, this international banker. But in China, it's a two million is a big income annually. So the central gave an order. You need to reduce half. No anybody say no. Very soon to reduce their, to cut half of their salary down to one million. So that is a, even nobody can complain. It's because they are totally controlled by the, by the central organizational departments. Even this thing is unfair. We have done a lot of work. And then if you compare with our uh, 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 colleagues outside of China, they originally have a 10 times salary than us. Now you ask to cut down half will be 20, just a, just a very low as other countries. So, but anyway, they have to follow. So that is why Chinese governments can use two hands to do the readjustment. One is a physical system, another is bank system. Mm -hmm. All belong to the central governments. So that is a, the strong power in the world can use two hands means this head can directly use these uh, two hands to do the adjustments. That is also why by one China facing the crisis, Chinese governments always take the measure as a counter cyclical. These measures, not like this uh, 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 free market country or liberalism country, they use the policy as a, as a uh, 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 follow, it's not follow, it's a uh, pro cyclical measures. So that's the difference. So why these uh, Western countries one by another fall into the, the trap of the deaths and the deficits and, and uh, so on and so, but China still be there. So just uh, from the beginning of 1920s until now, more than 20 years passed, a lot of Western people talk about the China collapse. Now they all change their mouths to talk about China threats. And then they argued, can we allow Chinese system to lead this, uh, this world? They said no. But they tolerant their own fails. They cannot jump out from the trap. But they refuse to learn such kind of system. I don't say it's good. I said it's, it's worked work for counter the crisis. Uh, even myself, by the, the, the volume, I think there's a, I may not accept, I may not follow. But if I think about mass, think about baiting population, cannot stand the caps, I have to acknowledge, I have to accept which one is workable? I need to follow which one. So that is not because I have such kind of attitude, I have such kind of volume. It's just because I need to think about what is the practice. You practice this country going to the clubs, you practice this country to join the competition, maintain non clubs. I don't think that this, this, this country's system is good. I just think it's workable effective, affected. So because here, you have to see, the whole of developing, de developed country, 
total amount of their labor is just a 430 million. But in China, we have a more than 800 million, doubled. Nowadays, we have a 840 million labor. Means that if you take all the Western system into China, can you solve the problem of unemployment? No way. And here, the population will be, uh, the, 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 the labor population will be, will be the 940. Means that we are going to have a, the biggest labor force. Can you give them job by Western system? No way, because Western system in the manufacturing only less than 100 million. So if you know the situation, you may know nowadays, we have a, the not only total amount, we also have a rural labor, 500 million. If you break such kind of labor pool in countryside, you will have a big flood. The labor is a flood. And then to flood the whole of these, uh, these, uh, these uh, cities. So the, the, the system now in China can maintain the stability by the city is a kind of capital pool, rural is a labor pool. It's unfair, but it's uh, workable. Uh -huh. And then we can, we can see that this uh, rural labor, if on, only work in the agriculture, they cannot have income, especially have a cash income. But you have to make them stay in the countryside. Because city, I said that city is uh, the urban always be the the crisis happen. If the crisis can transfer out their cost to the countryside, the crisis will be soft landing in the urban area. If cannot, that will be big disaster. So, uh, when I talk about such kind of analysis. I'm very embarrassed. I don't want to see that. It's because it's uh, not political correct. By the Western-centric system, by their discord. But if, you, if we summarize the 10 times cri 10 crisis in China, we must find that what is the, the background, what is the problems during this, this uh, six decades, seven decades. What, real, what really happened in these seven decades? So my, when we found that, we can see that when in the new century, when China adopted the strategy readjustment, the total amount of the infrastructure construction investments is that 15 trillion, more than 15 trillion now. And then they have a more than 1.5 trillion laborers to have a cash job. And then solve the labor surplus by large amount of the investments into the infrastructure construction. By such kind of construction, you can absorb this uh, surplus labor to give them the cash job. But can China continue such kind of a large amount of the investments into the infrastructure construction? Let's have a look. Here is uh, the, the pollution. I, I don't want to talk too much, but we need also, at that time, they talk about there, there will be the 7 trillion investments to solve the, the pollution of the land. Only land pollution, they need 7 trillion investments. And they said it's a big opportunity for driving the eco economy grow up. Means that investment drive economic growth. And here I said that the government's debts, most of these Western countries, all above the, the bottom line. China still be lower than the bottom line. Means that to use the government's bonds, to use, to use the government's debts, debt bonds, you still can have the room 
And uh, here shows that when you're facing the economic crisis, this one, EU countries, OECD countries, when they have the economic crisis, decreased its uh, fiscal investments. So, this is the same. The GDP decreased. It's a uh, all the, the the investments decreased. So the under the pressure of the crisis, fixed investments is the key driving force for the economic growth. So just now I mentioned Chinese still can have the room means that they still can have the key events to drive the economic growth. And uh, here. It's uh, these uh, decades from the new century. They have uh, gave the case only the rural reform, rural investments can make some stability, can make the crisis have soft landing. So this uh, picture shows to invest into the rural. And this one is a new strategy that is a so-called continental strategy make a lot of investments to build up this uh, three land bridge. Here the third land bridge I haven't used the picture but here from Hong Kong past the uh, Middle South Asia and South Asia and West Asia and then to Turkey and then to the Europe and also can down to the Africa. So originally we have a land bridge that is Siberia and also from Liangang Harbor to Lieutenant in, in Dutch. So we have a two land bridge. Now we need to have a third land bridge. And third land bridge mainly pass this developing country. Mm, especially the labor intensive country. So we believe that you can create a large cash job for this labor resources country and then to make them to have a, a high, little bit high income. And then they will have a domestic demand for the domestic industries, especially the light industry and the, and, the, and, the, and the textile industries. And then by these industries, they can get create more job. And then step by step, this area will be half the poverty reduction. So if there's carried out this uh, third land bridge, the Africa and the South Asia and the West Asia all can benefit it. Here, that is a Southeast Asian Peninsula. They have built up the, the network of the railway, but now China invested for improve, improve the highway and improve the railway for perfect network. And then to make people along this uh, road have the chance. And also remember the raw materials, the land all can added value by transportation means that property physical properties all can increase their value if you set up the network a thing about this a uh, small land owner this a uh, small household owners their properties all can be increased the value uh, means that the properties can be increased I mean the properties the value of the properties can be increased by such kind of construction. <clears throat> and also China trying to have a kind of citizens participatory agriculture means that make this uh, middle class and low middle class go into countryside, join the peasants cooperative and then to bridge the rural and urban and then to have a new room for these uh, middle class to have their, their investments. So we have a lot of a case to show that these uh, urban middle class going to countryside and then to mix with the, with the peasants in the countryside, in the village, and then to improve the environment and improve these uh, traditional house architectures. And then also can have a many uh, 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 ecological construction to benefit both sides. So, and then they have a, a lot of cultural regeneration events.
they have a lot of uh, the traditional technical regenerations. So many things will happen in the mass. They also can absorb a lot of uh, uh, investment. But it's not big investments, small and mid mid size. So it means that if we do ecological civilization as a construction, there should be still be a big room for the mid and small size enterprises, and also can be implemented implement the sustainability, the inclusive growth. So these things we have done in China for more than fifteen years is very effective. And finally, we will give the conclusion. What we can summarize from this uh, ten crisis in China since nineteen forty nine to twenty sixteen. It's a uh, six seven six seven years uh, modern history. We can have uh, some experience. I said, we thought exception means that any country, all developing countries, adopt pro capital policy in capital shortage stage, no matter whatever ism it is, tended to be pro people when capital oversupply appeared. Means that when they are facing the challenge of shortage of capital, the government set up the pro capital policy. When they have oversupply capital, they turn to pro poor or pro livelihoods, pro people. China is the case. Before 1990s, China is uh, extremely short of the capital, and then until 1990s, and until the, enter the new century, China have a capital surplus, and then try to set up the policy pro poor, pro people, pro environment, pro natural resources, pro ecological, whatever. It's a try to change step by step. But they're facing the, 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 the block of the interest group because 100 years there are so many interest groups take their profit by industrializations, transfer out their cost. They do, not, they do not want to have a pro people, pro environment policy. They still want pro capital policy. So there is a competition. And that is a, when I, I, I said the first conclusion I need to uh, uh, set up. The second one. Any overseas investments, the investors from transnational companies tended to be institutional setter or creditor for maximizing their capital profit. And uh, I personally have facilitated World Bank mission to carry out the transition loan in China in 1980s to 1990s. I'm very clear to know that. This a uh, Western centric system. What is the F, what is the purpose of their investments? The investments must change your institution, change your organization, even change your political superstructure, and then they can benefit. If not change, if not follow this uh, Western centric system, they will be very difficult to have the returns. So any foreign investments, invest in developing country, <clears throat> must combine in their effort, their aim, to change your 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 systems, change the developing country system. So that is a kind of competition. That is also contradiction between foreign investments and the local regime. Mm, it doesn't mean which one is a uh, is a uh, better, which one is a uh, worse. I'm just telling you that is a kind of very important phenomena. How to deal with that depends on how you do your own analysis about your situation. In any sir, if the countries, the developing countries, can take. The counter, uh, the, the developing country can take up counter cyclic measures only by holding on their sovereignty, 
over natural resources and the financial resources. Means that if you control your sovereignty of the finance system, if you control the natural resources by your own country, you can benefit by counter cyclical measures. Mm -hmm. So just now I mentioned that it's when the American adopt QE policy, they can benefit this uh, 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 sovereignty, in the independent sovereignty control their resources country, like Russia, like Venezuela. Iran, this country, even the, the American dislike these countries, but they got to see that this country take a larger, lot, of, lot of the free riding return. So it means that they control their own natural resources. So you, you may know that the Venezuela leader, Chavez, by Chavez revolution, take back more than 70% of the oil resources back to the national oil company. And the Putin in Russia also carried out the Putin revolution to take back the natural resource control, more than 70%. Iran, by the so-called Islamic, Islamic revolution, but also by the revolution, take back their resources sovereignty. So these countries, when they control their resources by country, even that that is a you cannot say that it's a it's a democracy. That is a state stateism. Or that is a state capitalism, but still can benefit themselves. Can give the income to the low class. At least. So I don't think that it's a better system. I just tell you that you should do something to control your own sovereignty for the natural resources and also for the financial system. Okay, that is uh, our uh, conclusion. And the second page of the conclusion. China has uh, two kinds of the crisis. One is an inter internally generated crisis, especially during the primitive accumulation for state industrialization since 1950s and its few further expansion since 1980s, means that the industrialization need intensive capital investments. When you're short of the capital, that must be initiate a lot of crisis. That is the crisis caused by the capital primitive accumulation. So that is internally. And then the externally generated uh, uh, crisis with input deflation or inflation by overseas financial bubble in 1997, 2008, and 2012. Means that one Western country, especially a Western polar power country, the leading country, upgrade their economy from the physical production into the financial bubble production. They got to transfer this financial bubble to any other developing country, especially transfer to the physical production countries. So China take too much cost by this transferring. The transfer cost to China mainly by the financial crisis. So the first financial crisis happening in East Asian countries, that is East Asian financial turmoils, and then transfer large amount of the cost into China to make China have a deflation, and also have a very decreased economic growth because of overseas demand large decreased. And then China turned to the, the first overproduction. That is exactly caused by the external events. And then 2008, when Wall Street had the financial turmoils. At that, that time, China just gained very high growth, annually more than 10%. Suddenly, there is a, a decrement a decrease of the foreign demand. And then 2009, global crisis immediately make China decrease their GDP and then make China have the crisis. And here, this uh, European debt crisis and the global crisis all happened until 2012. China got to facing the challenge of deindustrialization because there's not so many foreign investments flow into China, and also overseas demand decreased, and then the current account, capital account, all have deficit. So that is a overseas crisis 
make China have a more more bad, more worse crisis as the second overproduction and then deindustrialization and then turn this economy into the financial, how to say, it, not bubble but financial intangible speculation economy, and then real estate and the financial markets all have a a crisis since. 2012 until 2015, 2016, the China try to change their strategy, try to turn to ecological civilization, try to have more physical production, and try to uh, not block but reduce the speed of the financialization. So means that one way that is indicated by the leading country, going follow the leading countries into the financial capitalization. That is a world mainstream and then become bubble and then bubble break and then you collapse. That is a way, that is running into one way with no U-turn. Another way is just try to got the alternative believe that we can have another future, we can have another world. That world is ecological civilization. We must have a mix, urban and rural, together towards ecologization, ecology, ecological civilization, and then to have a inclusive growth. Pay more attention to reserve your natural resources and your traditional culture. And then to believe you can have a beautiful country, you can have a beautiful countryside, can have a rural. And then buy, keep your construction in countryside, not destroy the environment and not consume too much resources. Going to sustainability, we may have a good future. So when we finish our uh, lecture. Uh, when we finish our uh, summer, summary of the 10 lectures on 10 crises, we hope that you can see that more than 70% of China not terror area. It's a mountain area and grassland and uh, so and so, not, not terror. So China cannot exactly learn the, the experiences from Australia or from United States or from Canada or so, so and so, even cannot learn from Brazil. So I think that you can understand what I talked is trying to give you another explanation out of the mainstream. Maybe you dislike it, but you can take as a reference. Thank you.